We have one more month of summer and the air conditioner is currently out at my house, so today is a perfect day to review the Castle 240 RGB AIO water cooler. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be checking out the GamerStorm Castle 240 RGB AIO water cooler and seeing if it's worth your money. And if you're new here and you want to see more PC hardware or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check this thing out. Starting off with the physical tour, this is one sexy AIO cooler and possibly one of the best looking ones on the entire market in my opinion. The radiator is an all black design with a nice fancy finish to it. The tubes are that thick braided look which feels super durable, although they are shorter than most AIO coolers I think, and the pump is an all silver slash gray design which is actually kind of big. If you've seen other AIOs before, then you'll agree that the pump on the Castle 240 is a little big, it's not extra wide or anything, so it's not going to be affected by tall ram sticks or anything like that, but the height of it is actually quite tall. The two 120mm fans that this cooler comes with have a pretty unique design on the actual fan blades themselves, and this actually produces a pretty neat design when they're spinning, and even my wife commented on how unique these fans look. Both the fans and head of the pump are RGB, as you would definitely expect by now, and this is by far the best RGB I've personally seen on an AIO water cooler. You don't see any of the individual RGBs on any of these units so it looks super seamless and there's also three different ways that you can control it which is what every IAO should be doing now. Inside the box you'll find the three methods of connecting. You can either use the four pin or three pin connector that would hook up directly to your motherboard's RGB port or you can use this remote looking thing to control the RGBs individually. Now the remote would get kind of annoying. You'd have to hide it in your case and then open the case every time you want to change the RGB but this is perfect for someone that's building with a motherboard that doesn't have an RGB port. One other thing to note here before moving on is that the box this Castle 240 RGB states that it's compatible with the Asus Aura Sync RGB platform, which I wasn't able to test myself, but I can confirm that this works on my ASRock X470 motherboard using ASRock's RGB utility. Moving on past the RGB and aesthetics, the installation process was actually very easy, and it's compatible with a lot of different sockets like LGA 20XX, LGA 1366, LGA 115X, and pretty much all of the AMD sockets from FM1 all the way up to AM4, and even TR4 for Threadripper. Inside the box are a couple of different Ziploc bags clearly labeled Intel or AMD, so it was pretty easy to find exactly what I needed for my Ryzen 2600X, and the way that you actually set up these universal mounting brackets for the correct size was actually pretty intuitive and easy to figure out. One thing that I really don't like about this setup though is this silver color on the brackets themselves. Gamerstorm and Deepcool did such a great job making this unit look baller, but they definitely skipped out on these brackets, which should have at least been painted black. One thing that I did appreciate though was that there was no pre-installed thermal paste on the copper plate because no one uses that, and Deepcool was smart enough to just include their own thermal paste in a tube if you want to use that. And finally, also inside the box is a small fan hub so you can connect up to four fans with this setup and not just the two that it comes with. Moving on, once I got it all connected and ready to go, it was time to test this thing out to see if the most important part, the performance, was on par with how good this thing looked. For today's testing, I'm just going to be comparing Pairing it with the stock Wraith cooler that my 2600X came with, obviously the Castle 240 is going to perform way better, but this way you can see the comparison from this to stock, and that way you can compare that to a different cooler that you're thinking about buying. Also, I'll be using this radiator and fans in the pool configuration because that's all I can really do inside this DIY PC Model X case which I reviewed this year. First up was the idling test, and here with the Wraith cooler, the 2600X was sitting right at 44 degrees Celsius while the Castle RGB cooler had its sitting at an impressive 28 degrees. The next test up was a 10 minute stress test using Ida64. Keep in mind that your CPU will probably never have this kind of load, hence why it's called a stress test. But here with the stock cooler, it actually climbed up to a dangerous 98 degrees while the Castle RGB kept it at a nice 83. I feel like I should mention at this point that the 2600X is at stock speeds, no overclock here. So yeah, don't stress test this CPU with the Wraith cooler. And finally, the last test was about as real world of a test as you can possibly do, a match of Fortnite. After about a five minute round, sorry I couldn't test longer, I'm terrible, the stock cooler averaged right around 61 degrees while the Castle RGB averaged an impressive 46 degrees Celsius. So after seeing those results for myself and just looking at the thing, I'm pretty confident that I can recommend the Castle 240 RGB to anyone looking for an AIO cooler. There's also a 280 millimeter version which 
which I'll have linked down in the description as well. And I'm personally going to keep this cooler in my dedicated benchmarking platform because it performs great and it looks baller as fuck. Well, that wraps up my review of the Castle 240 all-in-one water cooler. Feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet. And definitely hit that subscribe button because I have a very cool video coming this week about how you can save a ton of money on your next gaming PC build. You don't want to miss that video.